there's a long history actually of genetic modeling for science for using um, uh, model organisms like mice to model human diseases to get some, some insight into these diseases. And um, really in the last 20 years that we've had programmable nucleases, um, of which CRISPR is one kind of programmable nuclease, it's always been kind of out of the grasp of most biological scientists to use these tools easily. And the reason is that, just what you said, pro making proteins, protein engineering is hard. So imagine the genome, which like the human genome is three billion base pairs long. So every time you need to target a different region of the genome, you need to build a new protein. And that, um, you know, you can just take my word for it that at the bench when you do this, <laughs> Uh, especially with the programmable uh, nucleases like zinc fingers or talons, is, is quite difficult. These repetitive protein domains and rearranging them is, is just not um, super easy. The quantum leap forward with CRISPR-Cas9 is that the, the nuclease component, Cas9, is actually generic, the, um, the thing that actually comes onto the DNA and cuts it. And it's guided to a specific location in that big genome by a small uh, piece of DNA or RNA. And one technology that we have really um, well, well done in our labs, actually we don't even do it in our labs, we just send it out to a company and the next day it just it arrives in a tube, it's mm. overnight. Uh, you can get these, these reagents that can take that generic Cas9 nuclease and move it around. So, so that's really, I think the, if you, you know, take away one thing, it's that compared, this, you know, this field of genome engineering has actually existed for a long time. The real difference is it just got a whole lot easier in the last few years. <laughs>